Excellent. And without further ado, I'll hand over the, the screen to Abi to welcome everyone. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, welcome everybody to the AGJC's weekly free Shabbat Zoom. Uh, each week we gather together the Jewish communities of all six GCC countries and our families and friends from around the world to hear an inspirational message before Shabbat, to light candles, hear a Devar Torah from our rabbis, pray and read a section from the weekly Torah portions. Uh, the Association of Gulf Jewish Communities is the umbrella organization for the Jewish communities of the GCC countries that are building and enhancing Jewish life in the region. While each community is independent, we share a common goal and vision for Jewish life to flourish in the Gulf for the benefit of both residents and visitors. And if I may today, I'd just like to say that there are many events in history that define the Jewish people. And in most cases, there is always a character who detests and despises the Jewish people, such as Haman in the Book of Esther. Hitler, of course, tried to exterminate the entire Jewish population. But today, the Jews are not only in the one country of Israel, they are all over the world, living a Jewish life and remaining as part of the Jewish world. Purim teaches us that out of weakness comes strength, and the strength that saved us was Esther's beauty. Today, the strength of our Jewishness is in the bond that we have with each other. Thank you. And with that, Ariel, let me please carry on. Okay. So um, I think we're, we're still waiting on some candle lighting. So in the meanwhile, um, Alex, if you'd like to kick us off with Yadid Nefesh and the Chadodi. With pleasure. But I don't have little birds singing in the background like AB. I need to buy some, maybe. <laughs> Yadid. I'll get you some. Shabbacha, <laughs> We know it's over, Holeta Aduna Ziva Olana Sihola Tabateha Ana Refana Labea No, I'm Ziva. Sitrasekpeti <laughs> Lirob di feret, o zecha ele chamda, chamda libi, vecho sana ve altitalam, igalena, ufros chavivi alaye, so kache lomecha. Tairets mir modecha nagila venis mechabach ma ereo kiva moe vechome no kime olam tili lai 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 tili lai 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 Tilly lie, 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 la 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 lie, Tilly lie, 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 Tilly lie, 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 Tilly lie, 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 lie. Any candle lighting? Why continue with the Chadodi? Go for it, Alex. Go for it. 
Okay, maybe I have to change tune because Eli is exercising. I need to find something more adequate. Ishmiano el ameyuchad Adonai echad Ushmo echad Ishim al tiferet veletila Lechad odi Lechad odi Nikad kala Enei shabat Nikabela Lechad odi Nikad kala Enei shabat Nikabela Lihikad shabat Lechu benelecha Ki <laughs> Mihigdash melech imalocha kumitzei mitocha fecha rahav lach shebet beyeme kabacha viu yachmol alayichem la lecha adoni lecha adoni nikat kala v'nei shabat nikabela lecha adoni nikat kala v'nei shabat nikabela Yahamimus multi frotsi vieta donai tarizi al yadish ben parsi venis mecha venagila lecha doni lecha doni nikat kala venei shabat nikabela lecha doni nikat kala venei shabat nikabela Boi be shalom ateret bala gam be sim chau be tzalato chemune yam singola boi chala boi chala lecha adoni lecha adoni likat kala penei shabat nikabela lecha adoni likat kala. Thank you, Alex, for the, uh, the double hitter. Thank you very much. It's now my honor and privilege to introduce Alanud Al Hashmi, an Emirati futurist, entrepreneur, and world renowned speaker who believes in the power of innovation and technology. She's a leading global team, she leads a global team, rather, who are working on creating solutions with impact to make a difference and help humanity and the planet to coexist. Alanud is a close friend of our community. She's joined us for Shabbat dinners in Dubai and Bahrain, and she's also joined us here in Bahrain for the first bar mitzvah in 16 years, which took place this past summer. And it's truly, truly an honor um, to introduce one of my closest friends and one of my, uh, my, my mentors as well. Alanud, it's all yours. What an introduction. I'm so humbled. Thank you, Ariella. And I'm, I'm actually, it's an, such an honor to be here with all of you and to say, uh, first of all, before I say anything, that the Jewish community is part and an integrated part of the fabric here in our society, been a thousand years ago and still today. And I look forward to a future where we show more coexistence than any, any time ever before in any place ever before from the Middle East here to the world. Um, allow me to um, elaborate a bit and share uh, who's the person that's talking to you. Um, I'm humbly um, an entrepreneur, a business owner, and um, a woman that really believes that um, love and um, cooperation and collaboration is the essence of humanity. Since the existence of humanity, we work together to, to provide, to develop, and to enhance civilizations. Um, the topic that I wanted to share with all of you, and maybe I would touch on some of the experiences I had in the last two years, and a bit maybe before that with the Jewish community here in the UAE and around the world. I wanna start uh, with giving an idea 
on what we do um, in, in, in the Futures Company, the company uh, that I um, founded and uh, managing uh, with another company called Gaia Advanced Farming. So we believe in um, the power of using our minds. The Middle East always has been known by its, um, um, techno like the, the, the scientists, the writers, the minds that were here that developed math, science, astrology, etc. We've always been leading it. And maybe we went through a phase where it faded. And I think that goes back to the separation between different, uh, I would say, tribes, nations, uh, divided by uh, different reasons, whether it's cultural, whether it's political or ge geopolitical. All of these reasons made us weaker. And today we stand here stronger because we are coexisting and working together. Just want to check if everyone can hear me uh, well. Is it clear? Brilliant. Perfect. So what, what we do and what we focus on is future-facing projects. Uh, I truly believe that when we use our minds, we use the technology that we have, the developed technology that we have uh, existing now, we can develop solutions that can help us avoid catastrophe that's going to come in the future. And when I say that, because a lot of the businesses since the Industrial Revolution have developed negative impact on the environment, which we are facing today, whether it's coming from climate change, whether it's coming from political reasons, if it's a conflict between um, different nations uh, or different parties, all of that have made us weaker. We believe that when we come together and collaborate together and work together, uh, with our team with more than eight nationalities, very diverse, uh, different religions, different backgrounds. We actually proven that it's a strength to be different and the commonality that what's common between us when we believe that there is uh, a good purpose that we can work toward and develop solutions for helped us to realize the impact and the powerful result that can be an outcome of it. So we work on future facing projects. We have a team of scientists and researchers and, and we work towards uh, doing research and development and developing technology and solutions to tackle problems like food security, like uh, education, renewable energy. So we, we work a lot on the food, water, energy nexus. Now, the reason I'm here to talk about the future as a futurist uh, working, uh, working, developing future facing projects, the region is going to thrive by looking more into the future and leaving the past behind. We cannot be thinking that we're gonna build something beautiful in the future with always watching our backs and looking at the back of the past. The past had happened. We need to look at the future and we need to work together. And this is always maybe the first thing that comes to my mind if anyone asks me about what do I think about the Abraham Accords or what do I think about the Jewish community in the GCC or in the Arab world. They're part, the Jewish community is part of our society, always been. We share so much uh, beliefs, uh, culture, Traditions, maybe me and Ariella and a lot of the Jewish uh, Jewish friends I have, we talked about so much that we have similar even words, uh, uh, culture, traditions. They're, it's very similar, but the problem is we're not having the right conversations. We were having the conversations that make us different, not the conversations that bring us together. And the more I have these beautiful conversations that talks about how we support each other, how we learn from each other, the more I realize that there's a lot of similarities. Now, when we wanna talk about the future, there's three different aspects I would like to maybe discuss separately, differently, um, as they have a huge impact on our living, our peace, our harmony, our coexistence, is the social, environmental, and economical. When I talk about social uh, impact, it's exactly what we are here doing today. It's exactly this conversation we're having here this in the, because of the association of the Gulf Jewish community and GCC. It's this discussion that we're having where we, you're learning and talking to someone from the UAE you've never met before, you know nothing about me, but you're hearing about what I'm working on and the projects and you know about my background. And you know I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Um, this is the conversation that brings us, us socially together. There's another aspect when we talk about social impact is how we support each other. And it's very important for all generations to realize that every generation have an impact. We had societies um, and, and, and communities and civilizations for years waiting for the next generation to take responsibility for the future. The future is now. 
and only our actions will be able to build a better future. Therefore, it's my responsibility and each and every one's responsibility to ensure that we Im embed in our, our children, our families, our co-workers, our society, that the future is only when stronger and better when we are together. When we work together, there's more things that are coming between us. There is uh, the other aspect, which is environmental. We live in a, in a country, I think in Israel, Israel is like 60% desert, and the G, which is very similar to the GCC. We have a lot of desert. Um, there is certain locations where we have mountains and we have seaside. Bahrain is like surrounded by, uh, by the sea. Uh, you know, uh, Qatar is, uh, is a peninsula. Um, and the, the whole GCC is an Arabian Peninsula surrounded by water. And, and we have um, arable land uh, scarcity and water scarcity here because we don't have these resources and we need to work together using the technologies that we have and the resources that we have to be able to build a better future for all of us. Thirdly, economically, and I think it's very important to realize that it can, the economical impact on our relationship is immense. When we work together and when we thrive together and we do business together is what's going to make the economy better for all of us. It's really harder to change anything or affect something when there is economical, environmental, and social positive impact coming from its essence. It is exactly the relationship that we're all trying to build here when we work together. And I believe that the future is going to be brighter when we all work together towards that. Maybe I'm repeating certain aspects because it's very crucial and very important to look at the future as something that we can do only together. The future challenges we're going to face, and I'm going to be a bit honest here, and I'm going to share some information. And some people, they think it's a scary, but it's really important to know the reality of the future, to be able to understand how serious it is and how actions is really required now, because the future is now. And for us to have a better future, we need to face these facts. We're losing 10% of arable land for every degree Celsius that increases in the temperature. That is our food. With the population increasing worldwide, we're going to face issues. So this is why we need to work together to make sure that we have solutions, that we need to have arable land, we need to focus on agri-tech, we need to focus on projects that's going to help us to provide food. The same thing comes to the energy. We can't be consuming a lot of energy that is using fuel, oil, or car uh, like um, coal. Using sources like that not only these sources are limited and we don't know how much they are available and for how long, but they are not sustainable or renewable. It means it has harmful impact on the environment. That does lead to the increase of temperature. So everything is very interconnected here. And for us to have a better future, CEOs, big corporations, the multinational companies, even as members of the society, we all hold the responsibility and the actions that we require to do to ensure that the future is a better place for us, our children and their children. And I wanna wrap it and end it by the beautiful experience I had in Bahrain, in the synagogue, which I was so honored to visit. I, I, I was so happy to be welcomed. And I wanna, I wanna thank every member of Nunu family, all the people that were there, the Shabbat that we had in Bahrain, uh, the, the, the beautiful uh, bar mitzvah that I was super excited to attend I even remember throwing the sweets in the end of that bar mitzvah because it was so nice. It was so exciting. It was such a beautiful occasion. I felt like I'm celebrating for that young man and how well he was reading from the Torah. It was, it was very beautiful and it touched my heart. It was such a, it was very sensitive and sentimental to me because I was allowed to experience such a beautiful uh, occasion. And I look forward to having people to experience our Ramadan, you know, and our Iftar and, you know, reading the Quran, reciting the Quran. We have so much in common that we should celebrate and leave everything in the past behind us. And thank you for having me again. And I'm so honored to be with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alanud, for sharing those inspiring words, but I think even more so the inspiring vision um, for what we can do together. And um, I'm now going to, I guess, Rabbi Abadi, we'll turn it over to you um, for some, some words about this week's Torah portion. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Ariela, and thank you, Alanud. Uh, nice to have you here with us. As always, it's nice to see you and hear your words of wisdom and your look uh, to the future. Indeed, uh, we have uh, a big responsibility 
for a better future uh, for the next generation, uh, not just in this region, but in the entire world, as uh, we are responsible for it. Thank you again for your beautiful words. Uh, in 1849, a uh, French writer, uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of him, Jean-Baptiste Alphonse Carr, said, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more things, they are the same or they stay the same. But I've heard many times from older generation that they tell me, you know, things have changed in the world. It's not the same anymore. Uh, it is not what it used to be. And uh, sometimes I find myself now at this age saying almost the same thing to uh, the, the younger generation or to my children, telling them it's just things have changed are not the same. But I think in all, if we look at the world, uh, not from a, a very close, uh, uh, a close uh, look, but a little bit above in a sense, we realize that uh, Jean-Baptiste, um, had uh, had it right. Uh, the more things change, the more really stay the same. Uh, we as Jews have always kept tab of history, have always looked back to see what went wrong and so we could make it better this time. Where we failed so we could succeed now. Where we were mistaken uh, so we could do the right thing now or learning from what nations did to us in the past and how we can protect ourselves today. This week, this Shabbat is really known as Shabbat Zachor, Shabbat of Remembrance. And uh, we have throughout the year many memorial days. Of course, we have the Holocaust uh, Remembrance Day, the Yom HaShoah Holocaust Memorial Day. And we have the Memorial Day for the destruction of the first and the second temple. And we have some other memorial days. But this Shabbat is really known as the Memorial Shabbat. What's the Memorial? Zachor about what? It's called Zachor only because the small portion of the Torah that we read specially this Shabbat, in addition to the regular portion of the week, and this week we begin the third book of the Bible, of the Torah, Vayikra, the book of Vayikra, known in English as uh, Leviticus, because it deals with the, mostly, at least at the beginning, with the work and the function of the Levites, which are also the Kohanim, the priestly, the priestly tribe, and all what they did in the Mishkan, in the tabernacles, the offering, the, the Holy of Holies, so on and so forth. But this Shabbat is all known as Shabbat Zachor because as I said, that small portion of the Torah that we read to tell us that begins with the word Zachor, remember, and it ends with the word al tishkah, do not forget. And that portion tells us to remember what Amalek did to our ancestors as, as they left Egypt, hurried from a few hundred years of slavery. And as they left all happy chanting, singing uh, with the newly found freedom that, uh, that they had, suddenly from the rear comes this tribe of Amalek and attacks the feeble, those that are in behind uh, because they were weak and elderly and unable to, to, to move as quickly. And he attacked them and he created an entire commotion to the point that the Almighty tells us very clearly, remember what Amalek did, do not ever let him, uh, let him succeed in his evil. And not only Zechor, remember, but Al Tishkah, do not forget. And of course, our sages in the commentaries, they say, well, why do we need don't forget, you know, remember and don't forget. Remember should be good enough, or don't forget should be good enough. Why do we need both? Remember Zachor and don't forget uh, about what Amalek did, and to always try to eradicate what Amalek represents. It's because human mind, unfortunately, tends to forget, tends to forget. And it's very easy to forget because forget is very, forgetfulness is passive. Remembering is active. And the Torah portion is telling us, remember, actively remember, don't forget, also passively don't forget. And if we look at the world, as I said, uh, as Jean-Baptiste had mentioned uh, in uh, 1849, 
evil has been around for not just centuries, but for millennia. We could say maybe it started with the two brothers, Cain and Abel. One uh, did evil to the other. And so from then on, it has been downhill, so to speak. Evil has been done. And evil has been done sometimes with impunity. And uh, evil has been done many a times just for the sake of evil. Not that evil done for a good sake is good. <laughs> Absolutely not. But evil for the sake of evil, that's definitely worse than evil for the sake of a, of, of a reason or a good reason. Now, what might be evil to one group may not be evil to another. So, of course, the attacker, uh, they don't see what they're doing is evil. But the ones that are being attacked, they see that what's being done to them is evil. And so, unfortunately, humanity has learned to basically treat evil relatively. And I think that's the mistake that humanity has been doing in the last several millennia, that we treat evil on a relative basis. If it's not done to me, then it's not evil. If it's done to others, it may not be evil either, depending if I like those others or not. And I think that's what the Torah portion is trying to remind us. Amalek, the tribe of Amalek, who no longer exist as a, as a biological people of today, but whose actions, whose evil has remained within humanity, where a group of people attack others with impunity, just either for self-aggrandizement, to increase their territory, to increase their power, to increase their richness, or just for the sake of evil itself. And unfortunately, that still exists. It is upon us to remember and to never forget that evil needs to be eradicated. And uh, that eradication can take in many, many forms, depending on how the form of evil is. Sometimes sanctions might be enough to eradicate evil. Sometimes you might need to go to war to eradicate evil. Sometimes maybe ignoring something might be good enough. Sometimes paying attention to it and preempting a act of evil in advance would have stopped a future tragedy. I think World War II could have been stopped if Hitler was stopped by the West, had it not been because of appeasement that was done, I don't think Hitler would have succeeded. And I don't want to bring many other examples of history because I'm sure all of you have, are well-read and, and, and well-learned in, in, in history. And if you analyze many of the evil things that happened on earth, you could see that there was a window that people of goodwill could have stopped that before it happened, preempted. And I think that's what Zechor Al Tishkah means. Remember, you might remember, but Al Tishkah, do not forget, you need to take action to prevent evil from happening, let alone from stopping, stop, stopping it when it already happened. And this is our, our obligation. In Jewish law, we are obligated and commanded that at least once a year we hear this portion to remember that evil cannot be let to live. Remember, don't forget. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much, Rabbi Abadi, for sharing those wonderful words with us as we head into Shabbos. Um, and now, Alex, if you'd like to lead us in the weekly Parsha. With pleasure. And thank you, Alanut, for your nice words. I still feel my right ear from the candies that you throw my face in Bahrain. O Matsaveda, the Hirish Bav, the Mishba, Al Shaker, Alehat, Mikol, Ashaya Sadam, Lahato Bahena, Behaya, Kiecheta, Vashe, Veshivet Axela, Shergazal, Oeta Oshega, Sherashak, Oeta Picadona, Sher, 
אף כד איתו או את ההבדידה אשר מצא או מכל אשר ישב עליו השקר ושילם אותו וחמישיתם יוסף עליו לאשר הוא לא ייתנו ביום השמתו ואת אשמו יביא לאדוני אייל תמיד מן הצאן בחכך לאשם אל הכהן וכיפר עליו הכהן מפני אדוני ונסלח לו על אחת מכל אשר יעשה לאשם הבא Thank you very much, Alex. And now we have a surprise, surprise reader. I'm going to hand it over to Huda Nunu, who's going to read the English translation. It was supposed to be Michael Sussman. <laughs> he didn't turn up. Uh, thank you, Alanud, for um, it was amazing listening to you. Um, Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, if a person will sin and commit a treachery against Hashem by lying to his comrade regarding a pledge or a loan or a robbery, or by defrauding his comrade, or he found a lost item and denied it, and he swore falsely about any of all things that a person can do and sin thereby. So it shall be that when he will sin and become guilty, he shall return the robbed item that he robbed on the or the proceeds of his fraud, or the pledge that was left with him, or the lost item that he found, or anything about which he had sworn falsely, he shall repay its principal and add its fifth to it. He shall give it to the owner of the day, he admits his guilt, and he shall bring his guilt offering to Hashem, an unblemished ram from the flock or the proper, of the proper value as a guilt offering to the Kohen. The Kohen shall provide him atonement before Hashem and should be forgiven him for any of, of all the things he might do to incur guilt. Okay, thank you very much, Huda. Um, and now we'll um, we're gonna turn it over to David to lead us in the prayer for the GCC. Okay. May he who gives salvation to kings and dominion to princes, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, who delivers his servant David from the evil sword, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, bless and protect, guard and help, exalt, magnify and uplift. His majesty, the king of Saudi Arabia, his majesty, the king of Bahrain, his majesty, the sultan of Oman, his highness, the president of the UAE, his highness, the emir of Kuwait, and his highness, the emir of Qatar and all their crown princes. And may the Supreme King of Kings in his mercy put a spirit of wisdom and understanding into their hearts and the hearts of their, all their counselors and officials to deal kindly with us, the house of Jacob and all the people of this land. <clears throat> be, be their shelter and stronghold and let them not falter. Uh, in their days and in ours, may these lands be blessed with stability, prosperity and peace. May this be his will and let us say, Amen. Thank you very much, David. And now to sing us out, Alex, if you'd like to lead us in Shalom Aleichem. With pleasure. I hope next week there is only three or five people on this call and that you're all going to come to Dubai to spend Purim with us together. So you're mostly invited. Please come. We want to see you here as soon as possible. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Yashari, Malachi Yelio. Mi melech malchei amelachim akadosh baruch hu. Vochem lishalom alachei yashalom alachei elion. Mi melech malchei amelachim akadosh baruch hu. Bachoni le shalom, malachei ya shalom, malachei elion. Mi melech, malachei ya melachim akadosh baruch hu. Setchem le shalom, malachei ya shalom, malachei elion. Mi melech, malachei ya melachim akadosh baruch hu. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.